cool. Let me see if I can see. It, it is a pretty cool interview that I've just stumbled across on YouTube, courtesy, yeah, of a channel called Warp Magazine, featuring none other than Devious One, who a lot of you will know as being a supreme talented DJ and somebody who talks very eloquently and very well about dance music and everything pertaining to it and you know he's a little bit pretentious he's a little bit up his own ass but I like it especially in a sea full of people not taking the art form seriously not approaching their set seriously not digging for tunes not buying stuff just begging their fans to send them demos that they can play off rip and not really just being invested in it in any way shape or form or just using it as an excuse to get drugs or to fuck chicks it's nice to see an artist or a dj who really thinks deeply about their work who cares a lot and who tries to somewhat have some form of artistic expression through tracks that they don't even make because that's always people's common sort of like pushback when it comes to dj and being artists right for the most part you're playing other people's music but there is a diff that we've all been to, we've all been out and been somewhere where someone played a terrible set and we've also been out in some places where someone's played a set you don't even kind of get your head wrapped around it and usually in those places with, with kind of small exceptions or few exceptions they're usually playing music that you can get a hold of yourself from like you know boom cat or juno or hard wax or whatever or phonica there are tunes that are readily available, but they've somehow been able to sequence it and mix it in a way that has kind of brought life to stuff that you maybe have listened to prior, whether it's kind of pitching it up, pitching it down, removing the mid, treble, bass, like crazy stuff they can do, just manipulate that will make it sound completely different than what you've heard in your own bedroom. I know it's happened to me plenty of times, right? You listen to a flipping Dixon set, you get a tune that you want to buy and then you go and buy it and it sounds nothing like what he played out and then you realise, oh yeah, he's doing edits, he's pitching it down, he's slowing it up, he's only looping this bit when he's mixing it, like just crazy stuff happens all the time. So I like um, whenever DVS1 kind of speaks about stuff concerning about the scene and whatnot and i think this one clip here he speaks about the fast techno hype and why he feels like it just is a bit of hype and sooner rather than later it will end and um it's an, it's an interesting perspective on it because i think at the moment it does feel like for me i think even last year because um i'm actually looking so i'm looking forward to going to possessions so i'm going to go to possession party here in the uk hopefully i think it's the 18th of february and then there's going to be a festival in paris that hopefully i can go to as well that's going to be happening on sometime in august i think or something like that and i want to see what this hard fast techno sounds like in that environment because i feel like though that crew possession are a bet the best representation of that entire scene of these young kids coming up playing this kind of euro trash hard dance hard techno sort of stuff kind of you know ebm influence kind of sort of, sort of music i want to see it in its actual natural habitat and see if i can kind of vibe with it because so far when you listen to those kind of things on a boiler room or on a horror um, how do you pronounce that station's name or whatever else it don't really it doesn't come through the screen for me personally it doesn't really come through the screen and nothing i noticed too there's not a lot of groove there's not a lot of bop to it it's just like everything's 145 plus and it just kind of slaps into it to each other it's just like noise you know it kind of reminds you it kind of reminds you of two really fast trains going past each other like, whoosh, whoosh. Do you know I mean there's no sync there's no synchronicity between them it's just these two big beasts moving at breakneck speed just going past each other really really fast and that's about it um there's no blend there's no kind of weaving in between each other no notes floating above them it's just nothing it's just kind of just two trains hurting in all opposite directions trying their best not to swear on the other side to clang that's it but there's no groove whatsoever and i think devious one kind of speaks about it really eloquently here in this video i think it's 9 25 in it so let's put it up on the screen the, the most uh, safe answer I can give you without throwing anything under the bus, because I have my own personal opinions, but my personal opinions, are, I'm going to say, are mine. Pure House and Techno has survived every hype. And, and right now, just like five years ago, like 10 years ago, like 20 years ago, hypes come. And hypes come, and they go. And they come, and they go. And from every hype, you get 5% that are authentic in that hype. And they will survive that hype. And then the other 95%, they move to the next hype when it happens. And right now in techno, we're in a moment of hype for fast. How fast? Everyone wants to go faster than fast. <laughs> but they're losing groove by going that fast. They're losing a little bit. Now, there are some very good artists in that hype right now, and they will survive it. But that hype will slow down at some point. And 
People get tired, people grow up, people move on, and another hype will take its place. So for me, as much as I'm aware of the things that come and go, I try not to pay attention to them because it's not gonna change my style. It's not gonna change what I play or who I am. And maybe I'll find a cool record that'll sound good slowed down just a little bit. And when things were really slow, I found slow records that would sound really good sped up. So. I just look at it as if it's good music or not good music in my personal taste, then it's interesting to me. But um, I'm happy to see new things coming. I'm happy to see new artists evolve and develop. Um, and I'll be happy to see uh, certain trends slow down a little bit. Yeah, the old man boom and him came out at the end. But I do agree with his thoughts. I think it's impossible to see that scene and not smile. It's impossible to see like these kids at this boiler room sets. I got one here on screen, right? This is a possession set. Let's get the sound a bit low on here so it's not gonna blare and pop your ears open. And this is Barfe playing at um Boiler Room London possession party. It feels like is it Boiler Room London or is it somewhere else? Yeah, Boiler Room Festival, London, right? It's impossible to see this stuff and not get and not feel somewhat kind of happy for the kids, right? That they've got their own sort of thing going on. They don't need to kind of go to all the old fogey things they don't have to because i think when i was coming up you had to just basically there was no younger generation stuff or there was no kind of younger generation heroes to kind of look up to in a dj booth everyone was basically your dad's age or something you had to be forced to basically enjoy whereas it feels like these kids coming up have people who are their age who are look like they look like them look like they're in the same look like they're into the same things they're into um hang out at the same places you know being able to ascend to this level of fame and notoriety playing this re really really specific type of music so it's hard not to like that sort of stuff but in terms of just like sonically it's not the best is it it's not really that great but But I really want to see this stuff in live, live in concert, you know, um, around the people that actually have made it really popular. I think position over the last three or four years of, you know, really kind of, I think, taken outdoor sort of rave production to a whole nother level. You know, the, the frequency that they were putting on events during the pandemic was just crazy. Like it felt like every other weekend they were putting on these massive events with like 4,000 kids in the middle of some Parisian flipping warehouse somewhere outside of the main kind of spot or the main center of Paris. Just really, really crazy. I think it's on the outskirts usually they do it, isn't it? Really insane, which I'm assuming is because of noise pollution and police trouble and whatnot and maybe licenses, but they do it really, really well. But for me, I feel like the artists are quite samey. I feel like the tracks are all the same. For what was that one track where everyone kept playing? Was it like a fucking Fergie record or something? Remember there was some remix or some Britney Spears that everyone was playing in that scene for a good like, it felt like a good four months. Everyone was playing this one edit of like, I think it was Fergie. If it wasn't Fergie, it might have been, uh, I don't know, one of those people. that They had a, there was some sort of edit that they made. It was just like, Oh, enough already with this kind of pop mashup sort of stuff it just gets a bit cringe but again i'm happy for the kids good look glad they've got their thing going on but i am just to see what the next evolution will be because naturally this will get a bit sharper a bit tighter they, they will kind of improve their output and there'll be more there'll be m probably a more variety of artists stuff will start to splinter a bit in terms of the scene people will start to get into other things in terms of what they want to play out and whatnot i think it will really really evolve i think so going forward but let me just get rid of this see now it's not doing that is it for me i don't know why it's doing that yeah i think that's done right